A question, which begins, I think I got lost when you were talking preferences about hobbies, likes and dislikes, and that kind of thing. And then the next thing we went to was it's either love or a call for love. Yeah. Now, your hobbies and things like that, that's just form and content, and it's, it's neither a call for love or, or love, is it? I mean, yeah, it's back on that surface, like you were saying, choosing between the blue sweater and the green sweater. Yeah. Those things are, are at the surface, yeah. you know, the likes and dislikes. But, right. but those are still part of the judgment in the sense of, you know, I'll give an example, you know. Is it a judgment or a preference? That, well, that if I like to play tennis and, and golf, or I like tennis better than golf, I mean, it's... Yeah. In, in a sense, um, anything that's an ordering of thought, anytime we, even preferences, in a sense, is a judgment. Um, and the only way you can tell this is, 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 is by your feeling, in the sense of, um, I use the example of, of going to a restaurant where you go all the time, your favorite restaurant, and you have maybe a favorite dish, a favorite salad or whatever, and you go in there and you're, you can almost, you're almost salivating, waiting for the waitress to come and say, I'll take the usual. And this time, the waitress comes and says, so sorry, we don't have it, you know, or whatever. And you have a little twinge of, oh, you know, that, that I use that example because it sure seems like, I mean, that seems like a common experience. Well, I'm just upset because they don't have my favorite dish, mm -hmm. and I like that. Remember, if you run everything back through the course again, it's, it's not, the upset is not coming because they don't have my favorite dish. The upset's coming because, it's, in my mind, I've, I've chosen the ego. Or I, I've, I've let some priority or some even preference or expectation take the place of peace of mind. Mm -hmm. You know, even in a little instance, because it seems like well, it can seem like that's pretty minor, like oh, it's just a oh. But but what Jesus is teaching in, in the course is that that there are no small upsets. That you're either peaceful, really in a deep sense of peace and joy, or you're not. And that even the minor irritations and annoyment, annoying things, are or rage you know, to use an example from the other stream, that, that it's all upsetting. So it takes a while, and the course he's basically just going to have to teach and teach that there aren't any differences between upsets. So in that sense, that's where we can relate it back to a judgment. It would have to be a judgment or an expectation that I, I'm expecting or judging that I really am expecting to have that um, blueberry pie, blueberry cheesecake or whatever, that the upset's coming from, from my interpretation of what's going on, not from... You want for you, you're trading your peace into that. Yeah, right. That's a kind of a practical example of how that relates to this. Most preferences do not fall in the category of take it or leave it. And I think, you know, um, anytime there's a, a charge of any kind related to something that I want, that indicates my preference. And, and that's the extent to which I'll you know, put that between me and my peace of mind. So it's not to say, you know, that you're not to play tennis or you're not to play golf. If your intention is to stay at peace and something comes up that intervenes between, you know, okay, you're playing rain. tennis, yeah, it yeah. rains and you're bent out of shape, okay. then, but then... if it rains, then it's like, well, okay, I yeah, another day. Right. Yeah, right. You know, it's no big deal. You can still stay at peace right. without losing it. Right. What the Course does is basically just saying, to ask that question, what is it for? And what it, he's doing is he's just having us train our minds to think of everything as holy encounters. That, that you know, instead of going out there sometimes with, I remember the old, you know, go out to win at all costs, very competitive in tennis and everything, but, but it's giving a new purpose to the world, to going to that tennis match, or going to that golf match, or going to the ball game, or going shopping, or going to the laundry room, or whatever, but just giving it a different purpose. Letting the Holy Spirit's purpose be the purpose that I'm holding in mind in front. So we've traveled the country, you know, with people. It, it really makes it makes it into a joy, the, the trip, by holding that intention that everything's a holy encounter. I mean, and, and just looking at it that way, I mean, it's like everything lights up because you end up getting into conversations and, and you know, meeting people at rest areas and in supermarkets and at course gatherings and here and there. It's, a, it's just a different purpose. That's, that's been placed as a priority in the mind. Whereas you still are doing things. You know, I, I've had people come up as I've traveled and we've gone, done these course things and people, I've used a couple tennis examples or something and somebody was like, I got a racket. Let's go out to the tennis court, you know, and away we go or whatever. But, but it's like, what's the purpose? 
and even when we're talking, we hit the tennis ball, we're, we're discussing things, and, and, you know, it's, it gets away from competition, too, though. I mean, that's another thing that I've noticed as I've gotten deeper into this, that, that the, the desire to be competitive, the desire to win, you know, I've started to see more and more, oh, that has to do with my own ego, with my own self-concept, my own trying to put myself higher up in my mind. And the more I see it, it's not like you, you make it bad, you just lose interest slowly in those kind of things. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a backdrop. I think more and more of, like, birthday parties and all of these celebrations and fireworks and this and that, I mean, I just look at everything as like a backdrop for the, to try to see that purpose, the Holy Spirit's purpose in everything. And that takes away this, uh, this form thing. A lot of times, also, with this, the spiritual path, people will say, i got to give up. i got to start giving up this and giving up that, and it seems like a sacrifice. And basically, it's still that level confusion, you know, where the mind is so conditioned to form things that when it, it starts to read this about the worldly ways or you were saying the materialistic ways and, and people can get into this thing of like a sacrificial thing of like, oh gosh, i got to give this up and give that up. Basically what it comes down to is, is yeah, give up ego thinking. You know, give up the, if you give up ego thinking, you'll give up ego perceiving, <laughs> ego interpreting. And therefore, the body will automatically, um, the behavior follows automatically when the, when the perceptions change. So I don't have to think, but, well, what am I going to do? Or how can I, what am I going to do to live this right? That's, that's once again, not where the focus belongs. You're just looking at perception. It's good news.